My name is Steve Armstrong, and today Elizabeth Farron and I will be talking with Fiona Smith, a Toronto-based visual artist. Smith graduated from Ontario College of Art and Design University in 1986, and her practice includes painting, murals, animation, comics, and illustration. She now teaches illustration and cartooning at OCAD-U. Her exhibition history includes group shows at the Art Gallery of York University, the Art Gallery of Mississauga, and the Museum of Contemporary Canadian Art. And her work has been shown internationally in the USA, Mexico, France, Germany, Italy, Taiwan, Korea, and Japan. Cheese 100, a collection of her Exclaim comics, was published by Peddler Press in 2001, and her first graphic novel, The Never Wars, was published by Anik Press in 2011. Smith also illustrated Corey Silverberg's What Makes a Baby in 2011, which was re-released by Seven Stories Press in May of 2013. This was followed up with Sex is a Funny Word in 2015. Welcome to Legway Television. Okay, hi, uh, uh, Fiona. And it's uh, really nice to be here at your show uh, at this uh, gallery called uh, Weird Things. And we're going to get traffic noise tonight, but um, uh, I guess we can deal with that. Uh, I could start talking. This is a, a show about uh, uh, the mall, spelled M E U L. And. Um, uh, this it's all about teenagers they go to the mall and uh, uh but then they turn into zombies kind of right that's what's going yeah. on and so does that have to, and does that is that some sort of a comment on um like commercial culture and and the way people get um, stirred into not becoming like self-actualizing uh, uh, individuals or something to that effect uh it's about commercialism media using young bodies to sell whatever they sell clothing lifestyle, you name it. And in this commercial space, the, the teenagers are turning in on themselves and, and uh, eating the public. So like the, uh, the mall walkers are being eaten. <laughs> um, <laughs> okay. Which tend to be geriatric. Yes. Yeah, they're already the yeah. yeah. zombie-ish. Yeah. 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 Okay. Um, now you've got things that look like this, kind of like a condom, kind of like a blood vessel throughout these images. Kind um, of like a sphincter. Yes. <laughs> yes. Okay. Yeah. So what is that? Is that a portal of some sort or is that? Uh, it changes. Sometimes it's, um, it's a maw, sometimes it's eyeballs. Uh, um, it could be a face with, or a mouth with teeth in mm -hmm. it. So it. It evolves all the time through the piece. And that's something that I do with my work often is like pick up some symbol and, uh, or icon and use it as a motif throughout, throughout the work. Um, so like previous ones have been um, ribbons that turn into like the the way a ribbon, if it's like, you know, picturesque kind of girly ribbon, mm -hmm. it becomes like a bow. It becomes a, a walking figure. Mm -hmm. um, they morph. Yeah, it's kind of like working through a metaphor, I suppose. Yeah. Eh? So. Yeah. Okay. Now, when we were talking a little bit earlier, you were talking about the colors that you had picked for this. It's very black and very red. Um, do you want to talk about that a little bit? Sure, this isn't the whole project of the mall. It's a little more than half of the complete piece. Uh, if I was showing the whole piece, it would be in a, hopefully a long, narrow space with two 20-foot long walls facing each other. And one wall would have a red ground and one wall would have a black ground. So it's like pitting these uh, two, like Team Red, Team Black, these teenagers against each other. And then this middle piece here behind me is kind of the the instigator of this catastrophic event, and it's this uh, uh, elevator creature. Mm -hmm. um, and there's a video work that goes with it, and uh, as well as this zine that you guys have here. So uh, that, that zine is uh, you've done more. Uh, images since the scene, so some of these are newer than that, or not? I'm, I'm just know, this, asking. I this is the um, this is the last 
of the series oh, oh okay. of works within the mall okay so let's talk about stairs because you've got your escalator kind of creature you've got stairs happening all the way through this and different levels and in the um, walk as well There's and many, in the walk stairs, you've got yeah. stairs so w why do you play with stairs I wouldn't want to answer that question. <laughs> yeah, I'm, I know there's got to be like uh, personal experiences as a kid related to it. it. Like one story that just pops into my mind is uh, my mom's family moved here from the UK, and the first time um, my aunt and I think my granny and my great granny were at um, maybe Eaton's or Ogilvy's or something. We're talking about it in the 50s, right? And there was an, a, an escalator and they didn't really know how to, to deal with it. Oh. And my great granny fell and they had to help her get up. And it was like this hor horrific thing that, that happened. Obviously, they, were, they all worked out. But um, uh, the stairs again take on on meaning and and agency like, like those orifice things or mm -hmm. the the ribbon bows. Um, they're also a really fun graphic thing yeah. to work with, right? Parallel lines and the mm -hmm. points. Um, yeah, they're a metaphor for life and resiliency and obstacles. Okay. Do going you want, up or down them. Do you I want mean, to, like, you know. Do you want to talk about the walk a little bit, the video that you made? Was that, did you make it for the first Thursday's yeah. event at the AGO? So that was a specific commission? Or? Yeah, it was a site specific. I knew I was going to get a bit of wall and I wanted to do um, a projection and mm -hmm. something that had to do with comics because the theme of that first Thursday was autobiographic comics or autobiographic related artwork. Um, so doing a slideshow of a comic, each um, each image is a panel in a in a strip. Although it works differently than a comic, where a comic page you move from panel to panel. Here you're just seeing one panel at a time, which kind of destroys the effects of comics um, or the structure of it. But um, yeah, in that uh, uh, slideshow there were 75 images, and they show. Um, what appears to be a female body that transforms and um, is just going from one point, like point A to point B, and somewhere along the way there's stairs and there's falling and it looks like they're going to die, but they don't, um, and they transform, and it kind of keeps going like that, and it could, it could be a loop. I mean, by the end they they disappear. They kind of go from one chair to another chair, uh -huh. but. Um, well, it looks like a, a, a birth mm -hmm. off the top. Uh, it's like some sort of oh, yeah, interdimensional yeah, portal. It's also like thing. a yeah. floating vagina or something, mm -hmm. and then and then, uh, and then she's born. So, yeah. And the physical form changes a lot in that piece. Yeah. Um, though the imagined leg in the little thought balloon is kind of consistent. Yeah, I was I was thinking that these. Uh, the three bodies that you see moving are more like uh, what uh, a person feels they are in their head instead of what you see them as physically. Mm -hmm. But the kind of like the, that dream thought or thought is actually the real world and seeing something recognizable, whereas the, the figures that appear in there are kind of cartoony or... Um, are beyond human, but mm -hmm. the, yeah, the legs, the feet are human. Okay, and mm -hmm. the figure um, in that is sort of um, a funny, a funny shape, and I'm trying to stretch this back to the mall because we just touched on the mall, and the mall is a big work. Um, you have sort of ghost-like figures. Mm -hmm. Um, in the mall. Do you want to talk about that a little bit? Yeah, I think there's there's the pre-transformation, the teens as they were when they first walked in, healthy and hale and alive, and then what they are after they've transformed. 
um, and then how they see the world. So the, the more ghosty okay. um, scenarios are through their post-transformation eyes. Okay. I would say. So that's sort of like um, their point of view, if mm -hmm. it were a film piece, the ghosty sort of yeah. bodies that they're interacting with from that perspective. Yeah, and they're never satisfied, right? They're just always um, ravenous. Mm -hmm. Well, that's actually, this, this one right behind you there, I was just kind of looking at that because uh, there's, there's a lot of uh, death and dismemberment and stuff mm -hmm. going on, and, and that's a mannequin because you can see the little pin uh, at the waist. Uh, yeah. So that's, that's nice, actually. Yeah. yeah. Yeah, I don't know how many people pick up on that, that there's like these are mannequin parts, but this senior's been cut in half and yeah, there's still placed a little lady on top. Head at the top there. Yeah. yeah. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And there was one of the images that we were looking at in preparation for talking with you um, that had two different layers of the mall. And there was this stack of um, shirts. shirts. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Mm -hmm. this stack of beautifully folded shirts amidst, uh, you know, on, on a little plinth kind of thing, um, amidst all this chaos and you know violence mm -hmm. and that anchoring point was just so eerie because it was like multiplicity um, the thought of consumerism um, but it also read like bodies mm -hmm. you know because everything else is just so horrific um, and thinking about repetition I mean that's something you've done a lot in your work yeah um, particularly um, thinking about cloning. Mm -hmm. Yeah, that that figures well. There's uh, two things: the uh, the uh, the uh, drawing siphon, which is a uh, that's a great series. The uh, the, the slideshow that, that you sent us is uh, absolutely marvelous. How it moves along. Um, but you said that actually the method, um, the uh, the actual the, the process of making it was kind of like cloning one mm -hmm. drawing from another, uh, and. Oh, it's in the Neverwhere's. It, it, uh, the, um, yeah. the basic surprise ending is that, oh, they're clones, and, and they're being uh, uh, given the memories of, the, of their originals. Yeah, so I guess I don't have a question. But <laughs> yeah, well, <laughs> do, you, do you want do. to talk a little bit about the drawing siphon, or the siphon uh, sure. drawings? Sure, that was a uh, time-based uh, project where I um, set out to do six drawings a day over a year period and and you know as I began it it wasn't so strictly six it might be less it could be more depending on the day and how much time I had maybe there were some days that I missed but by the end of a year I had about 2200 drawings and they're eight and a half by eleven and they all begin the, the first drawing was of a female figure and each preceding drawing was a tracing over the previous drawing. So that there, there was one original uh, female figure floating on this white ground, and then I trace over it. And each time I drew, it would change ever so slightly. And then if you looked at it as a slideshow, you'd see this slow morphing and a bit of an animated effect. But that wasn't the goal to make an animation. So sometimes the transitions are very quick and um, Sometimes they're more slow and fluid, and it looks more like animation. Um, but by the end of the 2200 drawings, there's so many uh, different kinds of figures. They really change a lot. Mm -hmm. And yeah, so it's the idea of, of cloning and using this drawing as the, the cloning um, device. But a commentary on that you could clone somebody, but you're not giving them the experience of the original person, so it'll never be a true um, reproduction or uh, replication of that that original. Um. Yeah, there's gonna be slight changes every mm -hmm. time, right? And you know, and so there they are. Yeah. Well, some of, I guess one of the interviews um, about uh, uh, losing my 
I'm losing my point here. Um, <laughs> over to you, Elizabeth. Okay. Um, some of the flesh in the drawing siphon starts to sag and become kind of grotesque. Now that happens a lot with your figures. Mm -hmm. That happens in the, um, the Chimera Daughters, um, and it happens in the siphon drawing. In You Are Here, the video that goes with this work, it happens. Um, why is this, this veil of flesh morphing like that? What does that mean in the siphon drawing specifically? I guess it means decay and age. It's also really fun to draw. Mm -hmm. <laughs> it's like drawing the stairs or drawing crystals or drawing, you know, any re repetitive kind of patterning. Um, mm -hmm. But it's, yeah, it's more about the body aging and changing and uh, gravity taking hold. And um, yeah, it's grotesque, but I find it beautiful. And, Okay. I yeah, trying to balance the, the two together. Mm -hmm. Like even with this show, it's like, uh, yeah, there's grotesque things being shown, but mm -hmm. hopefully there's beauty in that grotesqueness. Mm -hmm. Well, it's very interesting with this show because you've actually got people consuming flesh, and flesh has been, you know, so much a part of your work, mm -hmm. like this veil of flesh that morphs and shifts. Um, what is the consumption of that flesh actually? Uh, like what does that evoke, represent evoke or for you? Um, it's a cannibalism, but it's like self cannibalism. It's like mm -hmm. society eating itself or a person eating themselves. Um, and then truly not being dead, like morphing into this other mm -hmm. being and continuing on. Um, yeah, I haven't really thought about what okay. what that means exactly. Uh, yeah. Could change, uh, change the subject a bit. Yeah. Um, um, you did um, the signs at, uh, at Sneaky D's and the murals in the in the dance cave, mm -hmm. uh, and that's they're lovely and they're working really. It's huge, right? And a lot of work is at eight and a half by eleven. It's a lot of it is small, and I'm assuming. Uh, oh, just out of curiosity, the. Uh, uh, cheese 100, but those those drawings that went in the the paper, um, like what size were they when you did them? Um, they were eight and a half by eleven ish. Same, so they're almost or size like ass, eleven by seventeen, and then shrunk down. Oh, okay. But when I started my career, I was doing those uh, murals in clubs, so I, I I can work large, I can work tiny. It's, well, that's what that's the amazing part it's because the, the, those skill. big murals, um, um, you just basically everything is blown up, mm -hmm. um, and they still have the same kind of composition as the small ones do, and that's um, that's something I've never been able to accomplish. Yeah. <laughs> Things change when it gets over a certain size, you know. So, so yeah. that was all done with just hand and, and brush. That wasn't done with a projector. No. Oh, okay. But you have to imagine that's like. Uh, the mid to late 80s, right? Like the dance cave is 87 and um, being a really fast, efficient artist was um, a skill that people aspired to have because of the Lower East Side scene with uh, Keith Haring and Basquiat and mm -hmm. Kenny Scharf. And, um, yeah, and Haring was like a big hero to me. So that piece looks, you know, herringish. Um, well, you, my you, inspirations you were through. hidden. <laughs> yeah, you can see that coming yeah. through here and there. Yeah. Uh, even though uh, it's in these ones, there's coat, coat hangers make me think of Keith Herring. Yeah. So, yeah. yeah. Okay, and back to the mall. Um, let's talk about You Are Here, the video that you made to go with this. I mean, you're working in video now. You're doing this slideshow for the AGO and you're, you're doing um, videos with Allison Mitchell. And now you're doing You Are Here. Um, There's big jumps of time between those. And, and yeah. I, I, wouldn't, I don't know if I would include the slideshows as part of, part of that. Um, okay, because they were specifically slides. Yeah, because yeah. they're still images. And, yeah. Um, but I do want to do more uh, kind of animation, but scrappy and paper cutouts moving around, not like cell animation. Okay. So, can you walk us through You Are Here? 
Well, you are here is uh, you hear the voice of one of these teenagers pre-transformation talking about the prom coming up and um, who's going to be going with her and what the girls are going to be wearing and that um, uh, that her boyfriend gave her a hickey, which is supposed to be like, um, you know, a warning of what's what's mm -hmm. to come, right? So she's yeah. like, I hope it heals by the prom. It's like, well, you're going to be dead. So, it's, <laughs> um, yeah, so it has a catastrophic feel to it. And you're, you're watching one of these kind of monster faces just sort of dissolve. Um, yeah, there's not much to it. It's only uh, two minutes long, but uh, just juxtaposing the um, what's going to happen in the future of this young woman and hearing her, you know, um, total uh, unawareness of what's going to occur. Um, yeah, was what I was trying to to show mm -hmm. or get across. Yeah, and the face becomes like quite horrific to look yeah. at. Yeah. Yeah, and I mean that that's all metaphors for like life, right? That we you. Um, I guess the, the promise of youth and then mm -hmm. the, the future and what that might hold and um, yeah what you have to to face and obstacles physical viral I mean that's the Kimura's daughters right yes. it's like all the these outer things but also inner things that will stop you in their tracks and how you have to be resilient and move forward so like the folded clothing um, yeah, like there's a uh, normalcy will prevail, even mm -hmm. though um, everything else has gone to, to shit. Uh, Hell in a handbasket, yes yeah. indeed. Which okay. is kind of uh, hor horrifying, but also comforting in a way. That, you know. A lot of stuff comes out of people in, mm -hmm. in a lot of your drawings. Uh, uh, sometimes you can see their insides, or uh, sometimes they have some of their insides on the outside. And uh, yeah. uh, some of it is, actually reminds me of a. Uh, have you seen photos of um, uh, spiritualists where they uh, uh, produce ectoplasm and out of no. various orifices? Oh, you should really check that out. It's pretty interesting, yeah. old photos. Yeah. yeah. But on on that other subject, um, um, when you can see the veins and and stuff underneath the skin, uh, that looks like a kind of uh, well, it's transparent, and, and metaphorically, I suppose it's like it's vulnerable, isn't it? Mm -hmm. It's um, like you don't have a uh, a secret life. Yeah, yeah. A lot of the body stuff uh, is it comes out of being raised Catholic, and it's something I've tried to shed and um, exercise, have an exorcism mm -hmm. of it forever, and it still creeps in. Even somebody looked at this. Uh, the way this show is uh, set up, Mark the Liberté from uh, Carousel, oh, he said, "Oh, I see the um, the Christ arms out at the either end of the oh, the layout." Yes. And I'm yeah. like, "Oh, that's shit. they are." Yeah. <laughs> it's like it just keeps creeping back. So you know, growing up and seeing uh, stigmata and um, Christ on the cross and martyrs, martyrs with their breasts cut off, their eyes pulled out. It's like. It's pretty gross, isn't yeah. it? <laughs> yeah. Mm -hmm. But coupled with, you know, uh, euphoria and faith and um, transcendence, right? Yeah. And speaking of God, uh, mm -hmm. you did uh, God's Sister. Uh, mm -hmm. And you seem to be equating uh, uh, air or whatever is inflating that uh, uh, with spirit or something. It's, well, it's, it's a joke, isn't it? That's, uh, or is it? Um, you know, conceptually, the the, uh, the balloon was probably closer to um, like being a device in, in um, advertising. Oh, okay, yeah. Yeah, and and also uh, an efficient way to um, put a two dimensional image in a public space. Yes. Without affixing it to a surface, like it's on its own. Well, it certainly worked. And you just it looks great. Yeah. yeah. But I, I thought you're. Uh, I also got uh, that God's uh, a balloon, basically out of yeah. it. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. I don't know if that was the intention, but it worked for um, me. You know. Yeah. No. 
Yeah, I hadn't thought about that. Yeah, hot air, yeah. helium, just dissipates to nothing. Okay. Um, what about pine trees? Pine trees figure really heavily into your work, and there's the Cheese 100 um, Christmas one, number nine, that has the pine tree with the bones in it, and it's been cut off. Do you, do you remember um, it? That's years ago, probably. We can show yeah, you. That's such a weird one to focus <laughs> on. Oh, yeah? I mean, you could have focused on any any of them. That's I'm, I'm surprised that was the one. You know what? That's the only one that was ever printed yeah. with a bit of color. Oh, really? Yeah. Okay. It, the, the gray tone in there was color. Oh, okay. It was red. Okay. Um, so, pine trees in your work, though? Mostly, they've been... I mean, it's Canadiana, like, but it's also... Um, uh, been used in regards to like my uh, somnambulist, my sleeping mm -hmm. woman, um, and used as the bed of nails that she's floating mm -hmm. above. So most landscapes will have uh, these pointy things. I mean, they could be church yes. steeples. They could Sometimes be the, the people trees. themselves have pointy things on top yeah. of them too. Yeah, yeah. coming out of mm -hmm. them. Um, now, but for that, for that, um, yeah, it's like anti. Christmas bullshit, right? Commercialism right. <laughs> yes, and yes. Um, and maybe coupling that with uh, Catholicism and um, but I'll, you know when I was a young artist, I used a lot of uh, Catholic imagery, like playing on the um, the Madonna or showing these cute cupy Christs, like sexy girls mm -hmm. on crosses, which we've all seen those uh -huh. done. I think it's it's a young artist game to kind of explore that stuff but uh at some point i was like not everybody was raised catholic no ever christian wants to see this stuff or care about it yeah. so then i kind of tried to get away from it yeah, i suppose it's even rubbing the stars up uh is upside down mm -hmm. okay and thinking no. about your sleeping <laughs> women um <laughs> in your chipping zine you've got this image but she's She's descending. Usually your sleeping women are very, yeah. very much floating above the pointy things. But, you know, I'm reading this as a death moment within the context well, of the zine. She's ODing, right? Yes. So, yeah. But she's kind of in ecstasy, too. It's like there's some sexual stuff going on there. I mean, this is these are noses, but they look like scrotum. Mm -hmm. That um, certainly does right there. A yeah. big hairy thing. Yes. <laughs> yeah. So, yeah, the, I mean, it's... It's an OD, so okay. oh, she's definitely descending. <laughs> yes. So when they're floating, you know, what is that that space? Hmm. It's like at the most vulnerable, but the most powerful at the same time, and uh, yeah, and again about resiliency and uh, some otherworldly kind of effect. Mm hmm. Like that's for uh, projection. Or yeah. Something? Okay. Yeah. And the other thing I noticed in the chipping um, was the snake-like creatures that had the diamond, and that reminded me of the diamond on the hand that you used for holding pattern. Yeah. Okay. So how does the diamond work in in those pieces? Um, it's again an organic thing. I. You know, for the hand, it's like right back to stigmata, but it's also like the um, hand of Fatima or Hamsa mm -hmm. and like warding off the third eye. Um, but mine is, uh, it's also like Logan's Run, the science fiction, right? Where everybody has one of these jewels in their hand and if it turns black, you're, you, nope, you're about to up. turn 30, 30 and you're, yeah, yeah. you're going <laughs> to load up into oh. the ether and be killed. Um, Except for uh, Peter Ustinov, I think. Oh yeah, he got away. He's yeah, like living, in, yeah, yes. in his library. I that movie. I and he's seen supposed this. to be an old man, and I bet he's younger than me right now in that movie. Oh, I don't know, maybe. <laughs> if he was good, at <laughs> just with like old. gray and is painted into his hair. Mm. Um, but uh, okay, yeah. Again, it's it's these recurring um, motifs that that take on meaning in life. It's like I. Um, Use reuse them. Mm -hmm. um, okay, so in um, in the holding pattern, 
you talk about the hands and the drawings on the wall? Because from the image I saw, I, I couldn't really read the drawings on the wall, but they were part of the installation. Yeah. Yeah, so that was one of the few, um, well, apart from God Sister and maybe a couple of other things, I painted trolls before, but um, making three-dimensional objects and then um, creating an installation. I didn't want to, I had, I guess I had about 200 of these little hands made out of a uh, super sculpey and then painted, and they had bows at the top of them. Um, and I fixed them to the wall, but I, I wanted there to be more of a narrative and more of a co cohesion to the room. So I added drawings on the, the wall and um, yeah, they, they also harken back to the Camaro's daughters. Mm -hmm. of, uh, okay, so do you yeah. want to talk a little bit about how you're working with the Camara myth? Um, only this, this hor horrific uh, female character um, that's birthed out all these other uh, mini narratives through through that first one, and um, so within um, that project, there's all these female archetypes. There's there's martyrs, there's mothers, there's uh, uh, um, midwives, uh, Amazons, um, and and all that that. Uh, that project was born out of um, being inspired by Japanese manga. So in manga, there's many, in Japanese comics, there's many different genres and, and uh, approaches, but there, there is a particular um, area of like showing women's and children, uh, young girls' bodies in, in very transgressive ways and this is something I've always had in my own work, so like doing the project, it wasn't too far to create my own world that was inspired by um, manga. And, uh, but yeah, this sort of a uh, female empowering world, but um, that actually there's hermaphrodites in this world, so it's not completely like, uh, missing male, but uh, yeah, that's something that could grow into another story, mm -hmm. uh, maybe a comic or a graphic novel, but um, yeah, it's been sitting for a while. I just remember, uh, is that where the elephants are? Yeah, yeah the last... Not a lot of your stuff, you know, yeah. and it's starting to... Yeah, elephants kind of, show up a lot. Yeah, they, they seem kind of, they're certainly uh, threatening. Uh, uh, there's one, there's one image of the last elephant. Was that, is that in the Chimera's Daughters? Right? Yeah. Did you say that? Um, yeah, I'm yeah. probably saying it wrong. <laughs> no, I don't know how to say yeah. it either. Um, yeah, I, the reason I like them, yeah, because they're big. They're, they can be threatening, but they're a matriarchal society. Oh, okay. Yeah. Um, and, uh, and also they don't forget. They're supposed to be imbued with mm -hmm. this um, great memory. So... I guess that's part of my like, you know, the the um the nose nose. Like yes. Yes. Um the idea of of uh truth being told even if if you don't speak it, your body will reveal the truth. Which is very Pinocchio. Yeah. Yeah. So the elephants are part of that. Yeah. So you'll see you'll see swank in my, my work recurring words swank which is nose backwards mm -hmm. k-n-o-w-s <laughs> okay yeah. okay now you talked a little bit about um women in your work and you know you've got men and women in the mall yeah which uh, is kind of um the first time in years mm -hmm. usually it's a female world okay um but i'm just thinking back to um cheese 42 Meaningless and degrading, how tasty. Um, that was a response to a reader who wrote in and said that my, my, uh, my work was um, degrading to a woman, mm -hmm. kind of anti-feminist, which mm -hmm. is, a, that's happened a couple of times where I, I consider and I um, introduce myself as a feminist artist, but there was, there was a time um, 
in the 80s there was going to be a show of, of uh, feminist artists and I was rejected from the show because um, a couple of people on the jury thought my work was um, misogynist. I was like, what? Wow. Because, okay. because I had a sexy woman with, um, uh, there was a male figure but you only saw their penis and it was uh, a giant erection. Um, I think that was the, the upsetting part. So somebody had written into Exclaim Magazine and said um, that the work was mm -hmm. meaningless and degrading. So I did a piece in response to that. A very funny piece, <laughs> yeah. which actually like nails the whole, you know, you can be a sexy woman and still be making eye contact with the viewer yeah. in a very assertive, empowered way. Yeah. But your work has been very political. Like I'm thinking of Cheese Eight. My Canada includes Parkdale. Uh, well, that's, that's kind of joking around too. Yeah, because I lived but in Parkdale. But yeah, it was like yeah, it's not um, it's not old stock Canadian. <laughs> it's like or whatever uh, Harper said Harper recently. Was saying, it's yeah. like unbelievable um, or believable from him. Um, yeah, it was just a, like a Parkdale proud. I wasn't really mm -hmm. thinking of it as beyond what that meant about who lives in that neighborhood, mm -hmm. like beyond myself. Oh, okay. But, uh, because when you walk through that area of town, I mean, there are a lot of people that may be suffering from mental illness. Um, there's a lot of poverty. Yeah. Um, there's a lot of, I believe, drug use. Um, and there are a lot of immigrants because it's a mm -hmm. cheap area to live. So when you come to the city, and a lot, city, of, artists. And a yeah. lot of artists, yeah. yeah, you know, I mean, it's really it's a very interesting place. Um, and it's gotten a lot more gentrified since since I did that comic because that would have been in the early '90s. Yeah, I lived there in '96. Yeah, yeah. yeah. but, but um, uh, no, no. It was 98, but yeah. it doesn't matter. Um, so yeah, no Parkdale, when I read that, I thought, yeah, because that's an area yeah. that people would like to pretend doesn't exist. Yeah. You know, because Canada is supposed to be, I don't know, Moose? <laughs> Mississauga? <laughs> yeah. yeah. That's what I was worried my daughter moved to Parkdale. Yeah. I was thinking, oh dear, oh dear. Yeah. And when did she move there? Oh, it was during that same time <laughs> period. And it was right near mm -hmm. the Lansdowne uh, subway station. Yeah. So. But yeah, well, that yeah, that was a really was rough a, area. I wish I'd taken a photograph of it. Across the street was a, there was a, a restaurant was called Perry's Hamburgs, which is <laughs> now so gone. But yeah. oh man, that was a yeah. Yeah, no, I said moose because I know you did a moose um, when moose were in the city in Toronto. Yeah. Now, how was it doing a moose dealing with an image that's like so stereotypically Canadian? Um, uh, well, the best part of that was. Um, and it's just like doing public works like murals. Um, uh, Rennie Zamek from uh, Reactor Art and Design, who's a, an artist who's represented by them, as well as myself, um, lent me a storefront in Parkdale to paint these two moose, or mice, I don't know, <laughs> mooses. <laughs> and uh, uh, it was, I think it was in the spring and it was starting to get warm. And so I'd have the door open and just the, the flood and parade of people that were you know walking down Queen Street. This would have been near uh, Triller um, in Queen, and people coming in and responding to the art and chatting with me. It it's so great to um, to share that creative process with the public, and um, because if somebody's not that familiar with the the uh, artist process it's like magic right you're creating mm -hmm. something from nothing it's something you just take for granted but to, to share that with the public who are excited about it and want to chat with you it's um, uh, it's very gratifying mm -hmm. to connect uh, with people but was how was it different from painting your trolls or was it different from painting your it, trolls? it really wasn't because okay. with the trolls I would I would put um, uh, some like images of um, like eyes, ta you know, what do you call it? Like uh, uh, talisman, like, mm -hmm. you know, spiritual kind of stuff. But I was putting it on this larger 
you know, this three-dimensional giant form. Mm -hmm. So one of them was uh, covered with eyes, and the other one was like a patchwork of color with, I think I had hands on it as well. I mean, hands yeah. have always hands been Hands with eyes on work. them. Yeah. 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 Okay. And you also did um, a big mural for a hospital. Was it Wellesley Hospital? Yeah, what, I wondered why. And you mentioned it was referenced to Jean Chrétien. It was uh, that, yeah. that era. So that was a much more political kind of act. Yes. Um, that was uh, a commission. It wasn't a guerrilla mural painting. I was mm. hired by um, the Wellesley Corporation to paint the hoarding around the demolition site. So losing that, that hospital in like the most densely populated part of Can Canada was like a huge loss to the community, to Ch Toronto. And uh, so um, the folks who commissioned me to do it wanted to send a message so they um, prompted what the message would be, and then I kind of fine-tuned it, and, and then added some other stuff around the, um, the hoarding about the loss of this, this hospital and what it would, would mean to, to the folks there. I used to live there, actually, in the Earnscliffe apartment yeah. on, on Wellesley. Yeah. Yeah. Well, the, you know, that, that piece, um, with, especially with the message to Chrétien saying, what, what's Canada without... Mm -hmm. uh, healthcare, I think, was the yeah. gist. The gist of it. Um, some uh, somebody who uh, the uh, people I was working for referred to as uh, um, an Upper Jarvis resident uh, came by, and they're on their cell, and they're obviously calling the cops, and they're like saying somebody's doing this graffiti and blah blah blah. And I'm like, I was hired to do this. <laughs> and the cops showed up and I said, look, I'm being paid to do, I'm not, this isn't graffiti. And even if it was, this is Canada, this is free, free speech. Um, so I took them to the, the cops to the office so that you know, they could have an exchange and, mm -hmm. um, and everything was fine, right? They just went away. But that night, um, you know, we can assume it's the guy who was on the cell phone, came and, and uh, whitewashed that that message put paint over it wow really yeah <laughs> totally obscured it but the joke is on them because uh the wellesley just paid me to repaint it mm -hmm. and then we put this uh, uh kind of protective top coat on it so that if ah. it got vandalized again we okay could, you could just yeah clean it off or yeah deal with it in some way that we couldn't initially wow yeah Okay. So all upset about this message saying, what, so they don't believe in healthcare. Yeah. Yeah. Now, um, on to another project. We've got two books here. Well, we've got many books by you, but we've got two new books. Um, what makes a baby and sex is a funny word that yes. you've been um, very, very busy with. Yeah. Do you want to talk a little bit about what it's like to um, be working with Corey Silverberg and what these books are about? Um, this, like one of the best things that, that's ever happened to me is um, as an illustrator and an artist. Um, Corey, Corey Silverberg uh, used to be one of the co-owners of uh, Come As You Are, the sex shop on, on Queen Street. And um, I did some work for Come As You Are over the years, like for their website and for some events. And I showed. You and showed that. Yeah, yeah. Too. yeah. Mm. And uh, sold some zines. And uh, somewhere later down the line, um, Corey said he had this idea for, for a book. And when he initially brought it up to me, I was like, and he said it's a book about how babies are made. <laughs> and I was like, Oh, babies are really hard to draw. <laughs> um, and he went away and he, he was working on finessing the book and came back to me. And and I think at that point I had done The Never Worse, so I felt more confident about uh, that I could draw babies maybe <laughs> and uh, agreed to, to join in on the project. So this was first a, um, a Kickstarter campaign, a uh, very successful one. Um, and then uh, uh, Seven Stories Press picked, picked up the book, post that first 
mm -hmm. uh, publishing and um, signed on to do um, two more books in the series. So What Makes a Baby is, is um, for kids like three to six years mm -hmm. old and it's about all the many ways a baby will come into the world and it's it's revolutionary in the way that it does not talk about gender um, and and really opens a conversation between a child and their parent or guardian to talk about what their story is instead of what is the the um, n normal in quotes or so it doesn't familiar specify. yeah some, some people have eggs and some people have sperm and they yeah never Mm -hmm. Say who exactly? Yeah. yeah. And then when you get into some people have um, a uterus. I mm -hmm. love the fact you're showing these images of bodies um, that are in motion, because usually it's like this, you know, oh, medical, medical drawing. And even your close-up of the uterus has like your wiggles coming out of it, so it's like energized, yeah. you know. It's, um, it's definitely anchoring um, this in people. Yeah. Yeah. So um, how was it working um, doing sex is a funny word? Because well, that's the latest one, Yeah, right? so this is for older kids. It's like um, ages, I guess, 8 till 10. I'll throw 7 in there because I didn't mention 7 for here. Um, and it's longer and it uh, covers more ground. And, um, but again, the same kind of approach, open, inclusive, um, and also, again, um, not necessarily giving specific answers, but opening mm -hmm. conversations um, where a child can speak about what, what they feel like and what their questions are instead of imposing what, how they should be feeling or what they sh how they should be. Mm-hmm. Yeah. So uh, it's been pretty thrilling. I mean, it's kind of the antithesis of what you see on the walls here because it's all about cel celebration and life and, um, I mean, this is about impairment too. I mean, my work always is, but um, yeah, there's, there's a, a brightness and a lightness to this. Yes. This uh, approach. <laughs> yes. And the content and uh, it's for children. and. Um, yeah, it almost feels like I'm going through a second childhood in helping uh, create these these books. Hmm. Yeah. Well, you have to kind of think that way, right? Yeah, yeah, yeah so. for sure. Especially with the um, the second one, because there's these four characters who who um, bring uh, the book together, right? They're and they all have different opinions and characters, traits, and Oh, which is much, much like in the Never Worse, where you've got your yeah. three main characters that all have to work together, and yeah. well, four if you consider the cat. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> but yeah, so you did the Never Worse. What year? That would have been 2011. So that would have been pr prior to these this uh, exciting series. It's a really nice cover of the Never Thank Wars. You. Yeah. Um. I, Somewhere in an interview, in fact, I think you've said it more than once that um, um, art's all about distance and uh, and uh, intimacy. Did I? I think so. <laughs> oh, somebody else might have. You know what? That might have been. Was uh, that somebody else? That might have been Louise Bach saying that. It was probably yeah. that. Yeah, that Toro interview. Because that sounds yeah. very. Um, it sounds like something she would say. And very actually. smart. <laughs> but yeah. it's but it's true. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Cause the, well, because the because the. The body is one thing, but the mind is another, right? So, um, yeah, whatever you you are in the world is not what you are internally. Well, no, that's for sure. Like, uh, well, I mentioned before, I said in, uh, uh, Secret Life about with the transparent skin, right? Well, that's like well, a Leonard Cohen song, right? But, yeah. Uh, yeah, we all have one. Um, yeah. Absolutely. So, okay. oh, okay, so I thought you'd said that, but... Uh, uh, Okay. Yeah, because it covers all kinds of relationships. Um, a lot of the relationships um, that you illustrate, um, where things get sort of like, sort of maybe sexual or intimate in some kind of way, or like exchanging body parts and, and odd things like that, it's um, it's got an edge. It's threatening, mm -hmm. um, and uh, I think. Uh, 
that's kind of related to that intimacy and, and distance thing. It's um, uh, like his desire looking for um, uh, vulnerability. Mm -hmm. That seems to be a theme in the, in the, the Chimera's Daughters for me. Yeah, Chimera's Daughters, the Mass, and the Mall are all very intense mm -hmm. and um, yes, they certainly are. Very, yeah. very, very yeah. dark. Yeah. You know, because if you look at your cheese work and the never words and your zines, generally speaking, your zines, um, the Highland Greeters, I still haven't figured out. <laughs> um, Did you know that gr in Scotland, greeting is crying? So stop oh, your greeting. Oh, there. Like okay, now, crying. It, now it makes sense. Yeah, so it's all, it's all a crying woman. Oh, but, didn't know that. Yeah. Okay, that makes complete sense. Yeah. Um, but they're they're all very dark. But you know, then you have this lightness in your other work with like sexual energy and you know attitude and presence mm -hmm. and um, so you've got your pieces that are very um, energized and present, and then you've got your pieces where people seem to be sort of losing themselves. You know, is that is that the way you're feeling now, or is is uh, that? Um, I think they're Just, always in tandem, and okay. and also you have to consider that I've been next year's going to be thirty years of producing work and being pretty prolific. If I, if I can say, yeah, you're, you're, you're a busy lady. Like most I, people, yeah. yeah. Well, maybe it's time to take a break. <laughs> but um, you know, there's been a lot of evolution over that time, but uh, there's themes that that are constant, and yeah, for sure, that stuff that you're. Uh, vocalizing better than I can explain right. it. It's much easier to draw or paint it. And, yeah, uh, yeah, that's yeah. why you're a visual artist. Right? Yeah. Okay, well, do, speak, do we I guess have we're any almost, more questions? No, I don't I know. Well, I, 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 would, I just want to show you this. This this is from uh, Louise Box interview, I think. It was in Toro? Yeah. Yeah, and, and you were talking about um, um, empowered uh, women uh, and um, She's, uh, that is both sexy, I'm saying that from the point of view of a man, and, yeah. and she's extremely, it's, it's, I'm looking at an equal. Yeah. Right? There's, there's, there's no uh, power games going on there at all. No. So, um, yeah, I think that's, a, that's an absolutely great drawing. Thanks. But once again, there's the, the elephants. Yeah. Now, now. No. <laughs> mm. Yeah, there's a little bit of look, you can look, but you can't touch, too. Oh, okay. Yeah. yeah. Mm -hmm. Absolutely. Yep, she's looking after that all by herself. Yeah. Yes. Anyhow, I got. Okay. Well, I think we've covered most of what we wanted to cover. We could talk a lot longer yeah. because we spent, you know, quite a long time looking and thinking. But yeah, thank uh, you for uh, for really looking. And, and well, it was uh, fun. Long breath of time, too. Well, okay. One final thing, just to prove I've really been looking. On the cover of Cheese 100, the third eye is a piece of cheese. Yes. Yes, which is uh, a, a really <laughs> amusing idea because uh, your work is so uh, visceral, organic, yeah. uh, like uh, like in the body, you know. And uh, of course, cheese is created by bacteria and all kinds of yeah. nasty stuff, like just like that's inside here that you just you don't want to go near, you know. Yeah. yeah. But it's also a frozen moment in time in front of a camera. So, uh, relating to, to memory and when you say cheese, cheese. Oh, oh, mm -hmm. okay. I'm sorry, yeah. I didn't so, get that. So, but okay. all okay. that stuff, for sure, that, that Yeah, there's all kinds of stuff. But yeah. Yeah, no kidding. Yeah. There are, your, your metaphors are deep. They really are. <laughs> Thanks. Okay. Well, thank you, Fiona. And thank you, Johnny, for having us here at Weird Things. Wherever you are. <laughs>